Hi, it's Julie Davison from juliedavison.com. Welcome to my video. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make the double slider card. This one featuring the Painted Poppies stamp set. This is one of three cards in my Stamp of the Month Club card kit featuring the Painted Poppies stamp set from the Stampin' Up! Spring 2020 mini catalog. As you can see, Painted Poppies is featured right here on the cover, as well as on page 24 five and six. There are tons of ideas using these stamp sets. So if you don't have a copy of this mini catalog, be sure to leave me a comment or send me a message so that I can send one to you for free. On these cards, I'm using both the Painted Poppies and the Peaceful Moments stamp set, which are part of the Peaceful Poppies suite in the mini catalog. And um, I wanna show you really quick how my card kits come. So if you sign up for Stamp of the Month Club, you will get printed instructions with color photographs, measurements, and instructions for the card. This one includes a bonus gift, a PDF with additional project ideas and instructions. And then you get everything pre-cut and ready to go to make two of each card design. So each card comes packaged in its own cello bag. I do as much die cutting and punching ahead of time as I can for you so that you're all ready to just sit down and stamp. Let's go ahead and show you all the different measurements and punching that you need to do to make the double slider card. I'm going to set these aside and before we get started I just want to show you two more samples that use the same measurements. I want to show you that you don't have to just use the peaceful poppies. You can create cards for Valentine's Day or Christmas or birthdays or any any occasion and event that you might have. This is such an easy and fun card to make. And once you have all the measurements and instructions, you'll be making all kinds of double slider cards too. Let's go ahead and get started. The base of our card is a four and a quarter by 11 inch piece of cardstock. This is half a sheet the long way, and we're going to score it at five and a half. So this is what you would do normally for a card that folds at the top, and is a long card. Now the next thing we're going to do is actually we're going to put it back in and we're going to make a couple pencil marks and these are going to be guides for helping us create the track for the double slider. So I'm going to use my pencil. I've lined up the cardstock at one and three quarter inch and I'm going to make a mark in the center with the pencil. I'm going to go over here to four and a quarter inch and make a second mark. So I have two pencil marks just in the center of the cardstock. I'm going to put the paper trim aside and get out the classic label punch. This is what we're going to use to create our track. So I'm coming in from one side. I'm going to put the punch all the way in and you can see in the track my pencil mark. So I'm going to line up the edge of the punch with the pencil mark and then move it over till I find the other edge and punch again. So I'm creating a track that goes in between the pencil marks and exactly where we need it to go. So scoot it over, punch again. I've got two parallel punch tracks now. And if you find that you went a little too far with your pencil marks, you can always take this opportunity to erase the pencil marks because we don't need them anymore. Um, however, most of them is gonna get cut, covered up with the other pieces. So I'm not too worried about mine. I didn't, didn't go too crazy with them. Now we have lots of other layered pieces. I'm gonna include the measurements in the description of this video. But I'll go through them briefly really quick here. For the back layer, we have a piece that is four and a half inches by three and a quarter inches. And then the designer paper that goes over it is three inches by three inches. Okay, so these pieces are for the back. Then for the front, we have a piece that's three and a quarter inch by three and three quarter inch. And the designer paper on top is three inches by three and a half inches. Again, those are going to layer on top of each other and that's going to be on the front of the card. The small piece coming up from the middle is two and a, half, uh, two and a quarter by three and a quarter. And the best um, cardstock for this is the thick white cardstock because it's a little bit heavier since it's not being layered underneath anything. The thick white cardstock is a really good cardstock to use here. And we've got one little piece here. This is three quarter inch by three and three quarter inch. This is painted poppy and this is just gonna go across the front and then a two inch circle. Let's start by doing all of our stamping and then we'll go ahead and put all the layers together. As I mentioned, we're using the Painted Poppy stamp set. So I've got my flowers 
And I also have sentiments using the Peaceful Moments stamp set. We're going to use some basic, it's not basic black, it's memento black ink. And I'm going to stamp, I'm trying to keep my grid paper clean. So I'm going to stamp on this piece. And the flower is not going to fit all the way. So some of the, the stem is going to come off the edge. And then I'm going to stamp in pool party ink this large splatter right across the center. Then we're going to color in the poppy using the poppy parade and old olive markers. Now it's okay if some of your splatters are covering the flower because when you color it in it's going to cover up that color and any added dots that you can see through it just adds a little more texture to the flower. So painted poppy and then for the stem and leaf, we have Old Olive. Now all these colors, including the pool party, I took directly from the designer paper. So I used the designer paper as my inspiration to choose the colors for this card. These are just regular Stampin' Write markers. They are not Stampin' Blends. They have a really nice fine tip that's perfect for coloring in just like that. Okay, so that is the circle for the front. We're going to do something similar for the flowers on the small slider piece. First, I'm stamping the wishing you every happiness this special day will bring. And then underneath that, I'm going to stamp the flowers. Forgot to leave those out. I'm going to stamp in basic black. And then we're going to do some coloring with the red marker. Poppy Parade. Now all these flowers are not going to show, just sort of the top of them. So I'm, I'm only going to color the ones that are on top. And this stamp does not have any, um, any leaves or stem really to color. So it's just the flowers. And because it's just the flowers, I do want to add a pop of color and sort of bring the color from the bottom up to the top. So I'm going to use the small splatter and stamp the blue at the top of the flowers. I love the way that blue kind of ties in the bottom up to the top and really brings the card together. One more thing to stamp. We're going to stamp the happy birthday sentiment on the designer paper in the upper left corner. All right, now it's time to assemble our card. So we're going to adhere the front layers together. And the circle's going to come on with Stampin' Dimensionals. I'm also going to put Stampin' Dimensionals on the very corners. sheet out here. The very corners of the back of this card. I only want to stick to the corners so that I don't have any adhesive that interferes with the slider mechanism. So the slider is going to come, it's going to slide from, oops I got that upside down, it's going to slide from the inside. So you want to make sure that none of the Stampin' Dimensionals are going to interfere with that. So just one in each corner. And then um, on the back slider, we're going to take this small piece of ribbon. This is the Whisper White Seam Binding. And we're going to make a loop right here at the top. And this is going to go in the little notch. I'm using the one inch circle punch to create a little circle notch. 
and the ribbon will show up right in the center there. So we've got our designer paper next. Now you'll notice this designer paper is smaller than the cardstock. Um, and that is just to conserve paper because not a lot of the pa not a lot of the paper is going to show up. So we don't need to cover the entire cardstock. And three by three is a nice size to get um, a lot from your designer paper. Okay, we are missing our slider pieces. I'm going to have to steal them from this package. You need two pieces that are half inch by two and a half inches, and these are going to be the slider mechanism. We're going to attach them to each other using Stampin' Dimensionals. So I'm going to place one of the slider pieces behind the track and then line up the dimensionals inside the track and adhere the other slider piece to the other side. So essentially we're creating a little cardstock sandwich with dimensionals in the track. So this should slide up and down. Now we're going to attach the, um, the slider cards to that slider piece. So I find that tear and tape is the best adhesive for things that move like this. So I'm going to put a piece of tear and tape on each side. Now, um, this card has an opening at the top for the sliders. So the fold is actually the bottom of the card, not the top of the card. We're going to take the largest, um, the largest slider piece and we're going to center it from edge to edge um, and line it up with the top. And then the slider should be all the way down. Then we're just gonna take the tear and tape off the slider and adhere our slider to that piece. So when you pull up, the entire slider moves. Now right now it's kind of wonky because there's not a lot of structure on either side. So at this point we're going to close the card using tear and tape on either side to hold it closed. You only want adhesive on the sides and none in the middle that will interfere with the slider. That is really important with this card is that we don't want adhesive in the center of things. I'm going to close our card and we should be able to slide up and down That gives it a little more structure. Okay, now we're going to pull the slider all the way up and we're going to take the small uh, slider piece and we're going to attach it to the front of the slider. So I'm gonna take the tear and tape off and I'm going to line this up and center it how I want it to be when it comes up and glue it down to the slider. Now I've put my tear and tape at the top of that slider piece, so it doesn't matter if it comes all the way down. I want as much to show as possible. We're almost done, can you believe it? Now we've already got our dimensionals on the piece that's gonna be in the front, and this is gonna cover up the small slider. So we're gonna take the dimensionals off and close up the slider card And then we're going to center the front on the card. Just pull up and make sure that our slider is moving, not interfering at all with the dimensionals there. Uh-oh, I'm losing my ribbon. I forgot to put it down when I adhered the ribbon down. I meant I had intended to use a piece of tear and tape. So let's see if we can fix it. We're going to use the tear and tape to hold that ribbon down so that it doesn't come up. And then 
gonna use some glue dots to, to hold it back down. Now our ribbon is secure. And one more ribbon, this is gonna be for the front of the card. We're just going to tie a bow. and attach that with a glue dot. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you will try the double slider card at home. Thanks so much for watching. Happy stamping.